My inspiration comes from, the, uh, generally, from history and from the journals and diaries of early explorers of countries, and particularly Australia. My work engages with the idea of cultural interaction, and a number of my works deal with the transformed landscape and deals with issues of settlement, of encounter, and also the interaction between people on that landscape. The title of the work Native Gold refers to a particular purity of gold, and this links into the idea of authenticity in relation to identity and also culture in Australia. So Native Gold is generally considered to be one of the most pure gold alloys that it's obtainable from mining that's 99.9% .9 pure. And in this case, it speaks of, uh, as I say, authenticity and also the idea of commodification given that the sign is written in neon. And in this case, because the neon is connected to a large gold nugget on which the installation rests, uh, it speaks of the idea of resources and of mining uh, and also um, settlement and colonisation. The animals and taxidermied birds that are often in my work uh, refer to the idea of presence, and that is the presence of uh, an undisturbed nature before settlement in Australia. In this case, they're obviously stuffed or sculpture works, and they, they talk about a changed and transformed environment. The golden kangaroo in this installation is uh, reminiscent of stuffed kangaroos in museum dioramas, but it's a gold mosaic. Um, and in a sense, it, the gold refers to an idea of almost like a, a divinity. Uh, in this case, it speaks of um, a spirituality which is connected with animals as well. This brass plate has, is typical of the king plates that were made in the 18th and 19th centuries, mostly 19th century. This one, King of the Golden Age, again is a play on the idea of the Enlightenment and Enlightenment values that came along with uh, settlers, with colonisation. And usually the king plates had a kangaroo and an emu, which was an early reference to the coat of arms of Australia, which has the kangaroo and the emu. So it typifies something that was unique about Australia and that was the really quite interesting and, and could even say peculiar and curious wildlife that existed here and does exist here. The cockatoos sitting on top here are relate to the Gayambula, which is the totem of my grandmother's Aboriginal people. Uh, the sulphur crested cockatoo is the totem for the Dudabal and also the Mamu people. And it's used here as a, a reference, not just in terms of uh, nature, but also the presence of uh, spirit. These ones, in a way, they're connected with culture and also, because they're totems, connected with ideas of the spiritual world as well. And here, they're presented certainly as museum specimens, but they have a greater significance than that and a very different cultural reading that might be applied in a museological setting. And the finch over here is a sort of a, a sideways reference to Darwin and his theories of evolution. Darwin often used um, particular animals to prove his theories and although they weren't necessarily proven, which is why it's called theories of evolution, uh, finches were used as comparative specimens and in this case, although this is not the species of finch that Darwin used, it speaks here of the idea of uh, maybe a scientific presence in some ways. The work that I make is often deliberately attractive and often beautiful in that sense. However, there is also an underlying narrative which points to a darker story. And that's the, often the hidden history that has to do with settled countries. So there's the attraction of new worlds, the voyages of discovery, of new dis of discoveries that um, you could say advance science or these sorts of ideas, but accompanying that in parallel to those sorts of discoveries are the darker history of settlement, of uh, dislocation of indigenous people and the transformation of landscapes.
a great many of my sculptures incorporate mosaic and it's often used as a symbol to speak of commodification of trade, exchange and even transfer. In this case, because it is a 22 karat gold glaze on the china, it also speaks of the idea of wealth and of mind resources and of perceiving a land or a place as being something which is intrinsically valuable. So Native Gold is an installation which should be seen as something which is kind of interesting and maybe a little bit humorous, but it speaks of some very serious sorts of things. And this is the reclamation or the claiming of land by a new culture at the expense and at the cost of that which was already here.